So you're debating whether to be cash only or do you want to accept credit cards in your food truck? Great question. You've come to the video that we're going to be talking about that today. And I'm Frank Baltieras on the video series, How to Build Your Food Truck, where step by step, I show you how you can take an empty trailer or a food truck and convert it into a mobile kitchen on wheels, which you see behind me. This used to be an empty trailer. And if you're following along on the videos beforehand, I've taken you step by step on how you can build your own in your driveway from the comfort of your own home and you can take it to your health department if they let you build your own depending on the rules make sure that you check with them so let's get started and we're going to be talking about that subject in addition to finishing up some of the gas lines that we have right back here underneath the fire exist uh, exhaust um, suppression system we have a little contraption that we made for our propane lines so let's get started right now we're going to be talking merchant services so what prompted this part of the video is I got a letter from my, uh, I guess my merchant service provider that they're raising my rates. I'm like, what the heck, dude? Because when I first started my food truck, which was March 20 of 2020, which is rolling burritos, I was on a debate. Do I take cash only or do I take credit cards? And throughout the two, I think the two summers that we've had, yeah, we've had two summers now. Uh, to be honest, a lot of our processing has been through credit cards. Believe it or not, 99% of the people either use like Apple Pay, Google Pay, credit cards, because nobody really has any more cash. And it just happened to be that we had a really good rate when I first started because you can either go directly to the bank that has the merchant, pro uh, merchant processing accounts, uh, or you can go through a company like Square is what I've heard. I think is one of the most popular ones, which is Square. And I believe their rates, I Googled them, it is 2.6% plus 10 cents per swipe. That means every time somebody swipes, taps, or does a transaction on your card physically in person, they charge you 10 cents plus 2.6% of that rate, whatever it is. And if they call it in and you have to key it in, that's a little bit higher. So that's kind of how Square works. As far as I know, I could be wrong, but that's as far as I Googled it and that's what I saw. So back then I did the numbers. I'm like, you know what? It makes sense to go directly through the bank. So that's what I did. I used, um, I'm going to say their name because I'm like, I don't care. I'm going to leave them here on Monday. So I'm going to call and cancel my account. I use PNC Merchant Services. They charge me uh, three cents per, transac per transaction. So every swipe was three cents and then they called something called an interchange plus system that's what they called it i had no idea what it meant they kind of explained it to me but it went right through my head um and they charged it 13 basis points so interchange plus and it's 13 basis points so that means that every credit card so sometimes you have credit cards that have like rewards like the disney reward or you have like southwest or um, different American Express has different reward systems. So all those credit cards charge a different rate when it comes to their swipe. That's why they call it an interchange plus because when you get your, your statement at the end, every credit card has a different fee that they charged us. So there's not one that was exactly the same uh, unless obviously you had a, uh, um, the same credit card, right? They're like, Two people have the same type of Southwest Airlines credit card or something like that. You could also use a debit card. A debit card was a little bit higher on price. I think they had a flat rate, I believe, of 15 cents, something like that. Don't quote me on that. I really have to look because I shut off the debit card option on my machine. There's the one that I use. I use a Clover. This is not the mini, um, the handheld one. This is a Clover one that I use. And it's not bad because it lets uh, the customers tip on here. The only downfall of this machine that I did not like is that you have to type in your code, which is fine. So not your code, your amount. Let's say it's 20 bucks, 30 bucks, five bucks, whatever it is. You put in five bucks and then you have to give it to the customer for them to give you a tip if they want to give you a tip. So it's like you type it in, doo -doo -doo -doo, right? And then you put their card in and then you have to hand it to them so they can tip you. That's kind of like what I didn't like because it was a lot of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, and I was always on a mission to find out, hey, is there a POS or point of sale um, machine that has the screen in the front that they don't have to give them the machine so they can get tip us? And there is, Square makes one. 
but I didn't look at them because of the swiping option. And I had already bought this, so it was like they had a rebate on it, so it ended up being like about 300 bucks. So I got this letter in uh, Friday night, Friday night. And it says, effective January 1, 2022, the merchant processing rates will increase and you will also change the pricing method to a swipe, non-swipe pricing type. That means that if your current pricing method for uh, transaction is interchange plus, tiered, or rate plus, your new pricing method for your transactions will now be only swipe and non-swipe, kind of like Square. And it says your swipe processing rates will be 2.6% plus 10 cents per swipe transactions, and then 3.45% plus 15 cents per non-swiped transactions. So, and it says elimination of annual fee beginning January 2022. So they used to charge me like 100 bucks a year. I think they only charged me one time because I have only had them a little bit over a year, but they've only charged me one time. So I was like, this makes no sense. I am not happy. I'm going to leave you guys because I do not have a contract with them. Uh, when I first started, as I mentioned with my food truck, I Googled a lot of different places. I actually talked to a lot of different vendors uh, for my machine. Some of them had an option to put it on your phone, like a little dongle on your phone. I didn't like that because then you have to use your phone to give the customer so they can do the transaction. If you're doing like one or two swipes, it's irrelevant. But if you're doing, you know, 100 swipes on a, a day or something like that, then it gets kind of annoying. So you don't want to be doing that. You want to have it on machine is what I've learned. So that's the merchant processing side. I'm going to look for a new one now. Either I'm going to go with Square because it's literally the same price as PNC now. Um, and they have a really cool machine that I like. Or I'm going to make a couple phone calls on Monday to see if there are better um merchant processing companies so when you do a merchant processing account that means you physically are to the bank right it's you and then the bank in square square is facing the bank and you're kind of like a third party so if you get a lot of chargebacks which usually in food you don't get a lot of chargebacks they can shut off your account just like that when it comes to direct access with the merchant services you don't get that uh, where they shut you off, right, for no reason whatsoever. Square can shut you off tomorrow if they want to. Um, obviously, they have to have a valid reason, I, I would assume. But with the merchant processing account, or your own direct one, then you have full access to whatever you want. You're not at the hands of Square or something like that. That's why I didn't kind of like using Square, but now it maybe, maybe makes more sense to use them. So that's kind of like my two cents when it comes to merchant services. Um, yeah, is there a better option? Maybe. But taking credit cards is a for sure. You will lose probably a lot of business not taking credit cards uh, unless you're a really, really established place like those local bakeries or like even local restaurants around here that have been around for decades that you already know take cash only. So you're ready to, uh, to be able to do that. And obviously, if they have an ATM machine, then you can do it. You can't really carry an ATM machine in a food truck that I know of. <laughs> So there you go. That's my two cents on merchant processing. Hopefully it kind of clarifies a little bit of the questions that you have. If you go directly to the bank, then you might get a better rate. For me, I did for the first two years, a year and a half-ish, but now they raised my rates, so I'm going to leave them. So that's what it is. Again, Frank Valtieri's on the DIY series. I know we kind of shifted a little bit from the construction of the trailer, but this is just as important because customers is what's going to pay for your food truck. Don't forget that customers pay for your food truck because everything you put in here probably comes from your own pocket in the beginning and then you need money coming in to be able to pay it back. So um, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing. Frank Valtieres and the DIY series, how to build your food truck. Let's keep building, let's keep constructing because we wanna take this one and put it on the road. So let's go. This is kind of that little machine I was talking about that has a screen in the front. I saw it at this bakery that I went to this morning. So this is the one. Actually, Clover made this one. I didn't even know that they made this big monster. So, hmm, interesting. I wanted to add three small bullet points to the conversation we're having about merchant services, credit card processing. Do we take cash? Do we take credit cards? Do we take both? Uh, when it comes to this machine, particularly the Clover, you can add the menu on here. That way you just press like a button and it'll automatically uh, total everything. I keep a very simple menu, so everything I just kind of input it because my prices were pretty standard throughout everything that I serve. So that's the first bullet point is that 
on this machine you can add a menu and I believe all the other Clover ones that are like the big uh, machines you can. Same thing with Square. I think you can do the same thing with Square. Um, secondly is on these merchant processing vendors, uh, just, just make sure that if you are not fully in love with them 100%, don't sign a contract. Some of them will make you sign multi-year contracts, one, two, or three years, which include that you have to use the machine that they have. One thing is that they lock these machines that you can only use it with that particular merchant vendor. So I can't take this one and use it with like Bank of America or you know ABC company or whatever. So these are locked in. So this pretty much is gonna become a brick once I cancel my PNC merchant services. So keep that in mind. Uh, one thing about, I would assume locking it is that you lock in your rate for three years. So if I would've had a contract, then I would've had this exceptional beautiful rate for three years or two years, whatever the contract would is. So make sure you do your, do your due diligence on there because if you need to cancel, those cancellation rates can be pretty hefty. Uh, last but not least is on these um, merchant accounts, you need to have your EIN number, you need to have your articles of incorporation. You just can't go there and be like, hey, you know what, I have a checking account, can we open up a merchant account? You can't do that, you have to have a fully fledged like EIN number, articles of incorporation. Uh, they run like a credit check, a soft credit check on you as well. So make sure you know those details before you go and do uh, like a direct to merchant vendor. That's why a lot of people have the Square account because it's boop, pretty simple. So we're gonna find out if it is actually simple. If I go that route, I'll keep you updated. But for now, just wanted to post those three extra bullet points and uh, make sure that you guys have all the information so you guys can make the best decision when it comes to merchant processing accounts. Again, Frank Baltier is on the DIY series, how to build your food truck. Let's keep building.